And welcome back, everybody. This is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE's flagship TV production. We are here live at .conf 2012, Splunk's annual user conference. We're at the Cosmopolitan Hotel in Las Vegas. Uh, my name is Jeff Kelly. I'm from wikibon.org, and I'm joined by my co-host, Jeff Frick from SiliconANGLE. Thank you, Jeff. Welcome back, everyone. We, uh, we're going wall to wall today again. I think we've had a lot of terrific guests. Uh, again, we hope you'll jump on and join us on the journey, the data journey, hashtag data journey. Jump on Twitter, let us know what you think. So now we're happy to have another customer, um, which, which is always really fun to hear from customers, how they're using the technology, how it's changed their business. So we'd like to uh, introduce Bo Christensen from Ping Identity. Welcome to theCUBE, Bo. Thanks for having Glad me, Glad to guys. have you aboard. Thanks. So before we jump in, for those people out there that don't know what Ping Identity is, why don't you give us a quick little uh, overview over Ping Identity? Sure, Ping Identity does uh, single sign-on identity security for uh, 800 of the world's largest companies uh, worldwide. Um, we've secured uh, corporate identities of millions of um, employees around the world. Um, we do mobile security, API security, uh, and federated identity as well. Wow, so security just continues to be a hot topic uh, here at the show and, and, and a big use of, of, um, of Splunk software to, to look for patterns and to do all kinds of, of things. So you're, you're an active user, can you tell some of the things that you guys use Splunk for? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I'm in the, uh, the on-demand operations group. Uh, we're part of a DevOps group. I'm a, a site reliability engineer for that group. Um, so we use it for operational intelligence, like you know most of the Splunk customers. <laughs> uh, we also use it for security. It's tied in directly to our uh, uh, security infrastructure. Um, we also use it for uh, business intelligence, um, and our uh, support personnel use it for um, diagnosing customer issues, kind of in real time as well. Wow! So you've got you got it kind of spreading across a, a pretty broad swath of, of users. We do. We've uh, we have multiple apps. Uh, that are uh, for the different groups and designed for the different groups. Uh, we also use it for all of our reporting. We're integrated directly with PagerDuty, so uh, all the real-time um, messages and event types coming out of the system are piped directly to PagerDuty and uh, come out to me. I think I'm on the <laughs> call right now, actually, and, and my team as well. Cool. So we're seeing a you know a common trend among adoption of customers is you know they. Uh, download Splunk for free and they kind of get started in one use case usually in IT monitoring and the infrastructure in the data center and then they expand throughout the organization. Does that, does that model apply to you or did you have a different story? No, absolutely. It's the same same for us. Uh, we, we downloaded it and we're going to use it originally to manage. We had hundreds of VMs uh, across multiple data centers and had a problem of you know managing and auditing access to sensitive log files. So. Um, it started there, and from there we kind of you know, discovered how much information we could pull out of this machine data um, in our first generation product, and our second generation product, we were able to then integrate a lot of the machine data and log files um, with Splunk, and having Splunk in mind and, and uh, our dashboards, to be able to pull additional business metrics, um, event types, alerting, everything uh, that we could out of the system at that point. Right. We, and we talked a little bit before we came on, and you were saying that it's, it's really expanded beyond all the, the IT guys and, and, and the smart uh, technical guys into the business side of the house. So I'm, I'm always kind of curious, how did that happen? Kind of what was, was there a breakthrough app? Was it a, you know, a presentation to some executive that they said, wow, if you can do that, can you do this? Or you know, somebody looking over somebody's shoulder at lunch, uh, waiting, waiting to go to lunch and said, oh my gosh, what do you got going on there? So tell us a little bit about that. That happens that. too often now, actually. <laughs> right. It makes a lot of work for us. Um, but uh, yeah, so I think we originally built dashboards for um, you know, my team and, and operations to see uh, traffic and um, the amount of traffic per day and how it you know, fluctuated during the week. Um, and then we were then able to trend that data over time. Um, and we, you know, of course, like any good ops team, have a weekly status report that goes <laughs> out. Um, and ours happens to go to the execs too, so we, we ended up starting to put some of that trending data into the executive reports. Um, and then, of course, more and more requests filter down about, oh, you can see that, can you see right. this too? Can you tell me, you know, this about this customer and how are these connected and, you know, what kind of more um, business intelligence can we get out of the system as well? Um, and we eventually got sick of, you know, <laughs> running custom <laughs> reports and build them their own application then to, um, to so they, they could just log in now and see for themselves, like, who's active in the system, what changes are they making, should I call this guy, should I, you know, um, are these guys over there, you know, user limit, that kind of thing. So you built them their own application then to go on top? Just so they'd stop bugging us. Awesome, <laughs> that's great. I think that speaks to, you know, when, when even a, a CEO and an executive can use a tool, it's got to be pretty easy exactly. to use yeah. intuitive, so. Yeah. 
Just a little dig there at our CEO, Brent <laughs> Washer. Um, got to be careful. We both have ties on, Jeff. So, that's true. Uh, that's true. Uh, <laughs> so you mentioned uh, DevOps earlier. We've heard that a couple times uh, yesterday, actually, during during our, our broadcast. And so I'm wondering, how, what makes Splunk um, such a useful tool in that type of environment? We're seeing that more and more. Uh, in this kind of agile, kind of lean uh, production type of environment, where you you know you can't wait uh, months for for to, to run something out, an update or a new application or whatever, and so that requires ops and dev to really work closely together. So to talk a little bit about how you guys see DevOps, and specifically how has Splunk fit into that? Because we've heard, as I said a couple times, that Splunk seems to be an enabler of that type of approach. Yeah, it's because you can share data so easily. Mm -hmm. Um, so our interpretation, and there's a bunch of DevOps, right. um, is to actually integrate the engineering and the operations team together um, into scrum meetings, into planning and architecture. Um, we have direct access to engineering resources and they have direct access to operational you know, needs uh, mm -hmm. through us. Uh, we're integrated in the same ticketing system, uh, Jira, all that stuff. Um, and Splunk really enables us to um, give them access to our own operations dashboard. Um, so we can say, hey guys, you know, we just deployed you know, a new cloud desktop four hours ago and we saw an increased error rates. Here's what we're seeing. Um, and they can have direct access mm -hmm. to that data. They can see the stack traces. They can see untrapped errors coming through the system. Um, if it's related to you know, their kind of piece of the code, they'll pretty much know right away uh, and be able to tell us how to fix it or roll out a new fix for it um, in a really short period of time. So um, instead of us then, you know, providing production access to developers um, in certain situations, it's most situations not a good idea. <laughs> it's generally um, not a good idea. Right, so Splunk allows them, um, you know, unfettered access to all the log files um, um, in the production systems without giving them huge access. To them. So just as an example, you know, p pick a processor or, or, or an incident, you know, how many days would it have taken before and how many people had to get touched along that, you know, in, in round numbers, and sure. then kind of what's pick one now that you've got the systems in place that you have now. Kind of what does that look like? From so I, I think to gray. prior to prior to production deployment for us, uh, we had kind of like a, a hack day inside Ping where um, we had all of our regional solutions architects use um, Ping One, um, our on-demand application, for the first time and walk them through training. And the entire DevOps team was in the room with laptops. Which um, is how many people? Tens of people? Five people? No, our DevOps team is, yeah, at that point it was probably 15 people okay. or so. so and then a, had you know the entire group of uh, um, sales engineers basically yeah. in the room too. Not an inexpensive uh, investment in human capital. <laughs> right, yeah, sure. Um, but they were able to, the RCAs could say, you know, here's the error code that I just got. And we had engineers walking around and plugging that error code into Splunk and they were able, able to tell them right away here's what you did wrong, or hey, we need to open a Jira ticket for that right away, right now. Um, so that, just having our developers have access to you know, Splunk as they're you know, talking to sales engineers, and the first actual users of the system was fantastic for us, I think. That's great. Yeah, can you contrast that to some of the tools you've probably used throughout your career, and mm -hmm. how, how we're really changing, and, and how that ties into this whole big data movement and the whole idea of being more agile, uh, being more user friendly uh, to the extent possible uh, to really be more uh, be able to adapt quicker um, mm -hmm. versus the kind of more static, more difficult to uh, work with type of tools we've seen in the past. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, in, in the past, you know, you had a, um, a syslog search tool that you could use, or mm -hmm. you could have some guy logged into one machine and hope that everybody was hitting that machine. Um, Splunk allows us to be far more distributed. Um, we can have you know hundreds of nodes spread across um, multiple data center regions now, all in one place that you can see across all of them, um, instead of you know um, bringing all that data down into a central logging server and then grepping stuff till you're blue in the face. <laughs> <laughs> great. Well, sounds like it's been a, a terrific implementation. Absolutely, and uh, uh, a lot of R ROI. And, and are you seeing it now spun into being able to develop new stuff better, faster, and, and put those resources to work? That, that maybe before were kind of chasing tails of uh, a thing sure. that going so well? Absolutely, our on-demand team operated with um, just two site reliability engineers for four years until the beginning of this year we had a third. Um, so the operations team has been, been able to run really, really thin um, and we've been able to get you know incredible alerts and tune the alerts and predictive alerts out of the system too. Um, so yeah, it's been a, we couldn't live without it at this yeah. point. And on the biz side, on the executive reports, how far up have you gone? Is, is, are we going all the, the way top. up to the top? Oh, yeah. The, the boss Absolutely. is uh, 
Taking Andre, a little as a spunk for Andre loves sheet. the CEO. Andre, yep. Awesome. That's yes. great. <laughs> well, that's great. So, uh, you know, we're here obviously at .conf, so there's uh, over 1,000 attendees. Uh, and we've heard a lot about the importance of the community around Splunk and helping each other kind of find new use cases and uh, maybe reuse applications that were developed in one organization for another. Mm -hmm. uh, just what's your take? I mean, what, how important is the community environment around Splunk to what you're doing? And how much does that help? And, uh, you know, are you giving back? How does it work? Yeah, it's uh, the community and Spl Splunk base and um, the information that we've been able to get off that. Um, our, our biggest um, win with Splunk was designing our own apps and building mm -hmm. our own apps. So, um, we couldn't have done that without um, the applications that were already up there. You know, we pulled down a, a couple of them and you know pulled apart how they worked and how the menus operated. And um, because all the stuff's pretty open, it's just XML. You can go in and you know pretty easily figure it all out. Um, and you know maybe steal some colors here and there. Right, right? We don't, don't tell. <laughs> save as we like yeah. save as. Right. <laughs> right. Um, uh, and we've been able to give back too. And. Um, um, publishing our own, our on-premise app is Pink Federate. Um, and a, a lot of our Pink Federate customers are also Splunk customers and been asking us, you know, do you guys have an app for this? Do you have an app for this? So we were finally able to uh, to give back and, and publish an app for them uh, up on Splunk Base too, which has been which has been great. We've got um, a lot of happy customers. Uh, in that. Great. Yeah, that's interesting because I think, uh, you know, we follow the big data movement pretty closely. And one thing that we're seeing, we're not seeing as much uptick in is kind of the, the applications, especially out-of-the-box applications from, from the vendor community. We're starting to see them from vendors like Splunk, and, uh, but I also think really it's going to depend a lot on end users who are building their own applications because, you know, after all, you want to make use of this data to, you know, for competitive advantage. So you don't necessarily want a shrink-wrapped app that everybody else is using. So there's, you know, there's certain elements of building applications in big data scenarios that's a little different than a traditional scenario. Yep, and customers finding different ways to use the, the application. You know, I think mm -hmm. Tom was saying earlier, somebody like tracking elevators with it. It's right. Crazy. Yeah, right. I mean, it's just. They never would have thought of, yeah. It could go anywhere. And, you know, we've had, uh, I can't recall uh, the earlier guest, but we were talking about, you know, all the new different types of uh, equipment and machines that are, are being, you know, equipped with sensors that you can't even think of right now. But, you know, and who knows, my, your shoes, your, it's all your, just machine your watch. Yeah. So, you know, in, in some ways it's a little bit, a little bit scary, but it's really exciting when you think about all the opportunity that Absolutely. brings. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Very cool. Well, great, Bo. Thanks for stopping by. Again, Bo Christensen from Ping Identity uh, telling us again that if you are a, uh, a Splunk practitioner in your company, you've got an opportunity to, uh, to make some ways with the boss, show them what they can <laughs> do with it, hopefully get a raise, build them a little app, get them off your, uh, get them off your, uh, your, your seat, and, and make them pay for lunch when they come look over their shoulder and, and you have a cool app. And say, yeah, take me out. So anyway, a great story, uh, Bo. Thanks for joining us on theCUBE. We really appreciate it. So again, we've got uh, a few more guests lined up. We've been going um, wall to wall here at the Splunk Conf 2012. Um, and we will be back in a minute with our next guest.